this has been one of the most craziest 24 hours in the transfer window this season. Lucas Paqueta, Man City have bid two bids, upwards of 70 and 88 million pounds. Harry Kane to Bayern Munich has been accepted by Daniel Levy and Tottenham. You have Thibaut Courtois that's gotten injured, and Kepa Ariza Balaga seems to be that he might be the replacement or he might end up at Bayern Munich. Lavia has been poached by Chelsea and stealing Liverpool's target. And Liverpool respond by getting a £110 million pound transfer agreed with Brighton for Caicedo. Wow. All of this plus more. Let's get the show started. Here we go. Unbelievable 24 hours in the world of football. Honestly, I cannot believe it. But we can only begin with one club, one situation. The Liverpool and Chelsea saga. And Chelsea got a taste of their own medicine, ladies and gentlemen. After Chelsea poached Lavia, Liverpool went in and said, you know what, we're going to better you. They went and got a deal agreed for Caicedo. Yes, Caicedo is now headed to Liverpool Football Club and he has ag they've agreed 110 million pounds as reported by David Onstein earlier in the night. Now, I am shocked and I'm 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 enjoying this drama that I'm not involved in for once. Usually Arsenal are involved in these dramas, but for once we're not involved in it. This is actually crazy, though. Liverpool are now serious, serious contenders for the title once again, in my opinion. They've done the midfield overhaul. They now have Caicedo, uh, what do you call it, uh, McAllister and Sabozlai. They've done the whole midfield overhaul, spending massive money on the midfield, which needed that overhaul. They, they're, they're just a couple players away now from being complete again. And I could really see Liverpool being a threat this season. This is exactly what they needed. And now going on to the Chelsea side of things, this is, this is what Chelsea get for always looking like they don't know what they're doing. They don't seem to have a plan. They just came, seem to constantly throw money at the problem. And What's actually gone under the radar today was that they actually signed a player. They signed uh, Tyler Adams. Um, Tyler Adams was signed earlier today. Like, I don't know about you guys, but Tyler Adams is not moving the needle for Chelsea. He should be a bench player. He most likely will be a bench player. But they spent, uh, they signed Tyler Adams today, and it does look like they've gone from potentially getting Declan Rice or Caicedo to now getting Tyler Adams and Romeo Lavia. I know it's 20 million, it was a cheap release clause, but it, it, all in all, Chelsea are now going to be going from potentially signing Caicedo and Lavia to signing Tyler Adams and Lavia. That's not really the strongest midfield partnership for <laughs> Enzo Fernandez. Chelsea leaving themselves really short and showing their ass here. Todd Boldy showing his ass. It is, it is what it is. I personally think Chelsea are still going to finish below Liverpool. I always thought they were, but this Caicedo deal is really a game changer for Liverpool. Liverpool spending £110 million, pounds, club record transfer fee, one of the largest transfers in, in the Premier League's history. Like, wow, guys, unbelievable deal for, uh, for Liverpool. Unbelievable situation for uh, Liverpool. This, this changes everything. This, this gives that Liverpool team life. As for Chelsea, Chelsea fans are not going to be happy. And you know what? I'm I'm here enjoying the whole misery as I, I I've been I've been telling them for the longest time that this Chelsea team doesn't look like they have a plan. Todd Bowley doesn't look like he has a plan, and Liverpool fans are just going to be laughing. Liverpool fans are just going to be laughing like they were when they beat Manchester United seven 0 and they face you on Sunday, <laughs> and they could be announcing Caicedo's uh, arrival. Um, it, it's funny, and Brighton got what they wanted. Now let's go to some of the other stuff. This right here, the Lucas Paqueta stuff, is crazy to me. So if you guys don't know, Man City have submitted a £70 million pound bid, and then a second verbal bid was uh, was submitted yesterday of £88 million, reportedly. And that was apparently going to get turned down by West Ham because they want more than that. Now, to me, in what world does £88 million pound for Lucas Paqueta get rejected by anybody? That is crazy. West Ham are moving nuts. But you know what? 
you at the same time you got to respect it they they value their players very highly and they want to get a lot of money for their players now i don't want to hear about nobody talking about declan rice for 105 million or kai Havertz for 65 million if lucas Pocket is going for 85 million 88 million or more what is going on in today's market today's market is finished and if he's going to man city you know what? Uncomfortable conversations for certain players because I thought Kovacic was the good one replacement. I don't think so. But you know what? Man City are getting stronger. We don't want that. But hey, uh, if if they do get Lucas Pocquetta, we're going to have to see. I personally think Lucas Pocquetta at Manchester City will absolutely ball out because let's be honest, that David Moyes' West Ham system is not getting the best out of his Brazilian flair. Now, the next thing, this this one here, Harry Kane. I'm happy that Harry Kane has finally realized he needs to get the hell out of Tottenham to go get some silverware, and he has some ambition. But you guys, where, what do you think? Do you think Harry Kane is going to stay or is he going to go? Because I think at this point, he's he's gone. He knows that Tottenham team don't have nothing for him. They don't offer him anything. Only thing they offer him is a route to go win that golden, uh, to, to get the uh, Premier League's uh, uh, goal record. And he could still come back in like, a year or two and still get it just go and collect some Bundesliga trophies but in my opinion his legacy as a footballer will all forever be washed he, unless he goes to Bayern or he comes back to the Premier League and wins the Premier League or he goes to Bayern and wins the Champions League or he does something major for England his legacy will always be stuck with Tottenham and the losing legacy that he's had at Tottenham now that he's leaving it's a little bit too late for me he's leaving too late in his career where he will still forever be staying with those years at Tottenham where he didn't win nothing unless he goes and wins a big boy that's the European competition for for England the Champions League for Bayern Munich, or he comes back to the Premier League and wins the Premier League, or he could even win the World Cup. Any of those competitions that he can get over the line, then you know what, I'll rate him a little bit more. But I'm just happy he's not going to be scoring those North London goals. But hey, if we see Bayern in the round of 16, we know for a fact he's going to get a jammy penalty. Um, in, in other news, you know what else snuck by people? Um, surprisingly, Mbappe is going to be staying. That that kind of spun me, but it, it does make sense. No one's going to buy him this late in the transfer window. Thibaut Courtois also got injured for Real Madrid, and Kepa could be the potential replacement. And Kepa's also wanted from Bayern Munich. So this is just some mad, mad, mad affairs today. Personally, for me, I don't know why anybody in, in world football is interested in Kepa like that. But apparently a lot of coaches, his former coach Thomas Tuchel at Bayern Munich wants him. You got uh, Real Madrid have been linked to him. But David De Gea was earlier linked to um, a move to Real Madrid. And Chalati said, hell no, I don't want nothing to do with David De Gea. So <laughs> that was funny to see. But long story short, Chelsea got a taste of their own medicine. They're now going to be stuck with Romeo Lavia and um, yeah, and Tyler Adams as as Enzo's partner. And the fact that they don't have Caicedo is going to hurt them in the long run. Um, of course, Harry Kane is headed to Bayern Munich, and I think he's making the right decision to finally leave Tottenham, showing some ambition. But to the people who are saying, why is he leaving the Bundesliga? He's never going to win the Premier League. He could still come back to a better team in the Premier League and potentially win in a couple of years' time. Um, the the Lucas Pocotta situation is just hilarious to me. Are they spending $88 million on a backup, or is he going to be coming in to start right away and displace one of the players already in the team? Um, dare I say, it, could he be coming in to displace Phil Foden? And... Um, the the Kepa situation. I'm surprised anybody in the world wants him. <laughs> to go from to go from Declan Rice to uh, Chuameni to Caicedo and end up with Romeo Lavia. <laughs> Only Chelsea Football Club under Todd Bowley, man. And at this moment in time, they don't even have Romeo Lavia. Their their signing at this moment in time is Tyler Adams. Imagine if he's their their, their guy. But for now, I bet you guys do. Let me know what you guys think about all these crazy transfers. It's been an insane 24 hours. Arsenal is going to be playing tomorrow. I'm going to do a match uh, preview later in the day, hopefully with Gunnar Souls. And um, sorry that I haven't been streaming live uh, streams a lot more recently. They just had a lot of family stuff going on. And my parents are coming to vis visit from Canada So uh, over the next couple of days. So probably going to be doing a, a lot of family stuff with them too. But I appreciate all the patience. Make sure you do hit the like on this video. Get us past at least 100 likes. And if you've gotten up to this point in the video, let me know which transfer made you laugh the most and which transfer out of these do you think is the craziest. And boy, do we love football, man. It's been a crazy, crazy, crazy 24 hours. I'm out of here, people. Peace.